and I feel like this is from the Lord, and I, I want to preach it to you if God would help me to, this morning. And, and uh, if you got your Bible, I'd like for you to turn with us to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 9. Only going to read one verse this morning, and then I'm going to try to share my heart with you. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being falling into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Heavenly God, I ask, Father, you would open the door of utterance to me today. I pray, God, that you would speak to me, God, that you would flow through me. I'm asking God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord. I'm asking God for your help and your strength. God, I feel like you gave me this message. I feel like there are those here today, God, that you want to share your heart with them. I'm praying, God, that you would lead us and guide us. God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. God, let us listen this morning and what you want to speak to us. Father, I pray, God, that we would give ear to you and we would listen to what you are saying. I pray, God, that you would heal those that are not able to be here today, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are in the hospitals. God, I pray that you would help those that are traveling, be with them, and give them traveling mercy. I'm asking, God, for the anointing. I'm asking for the help today that only comes from you. Help me, I ask, and I ask all these things in the great and holy and mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said... Eutychus, Eutychus, I want to talk to you for just a little bit about this fellow. We, for some reason, God gives us his name. We've got the story of a lot of people in the Bible, and it just tells about them. It doesn't give their name. The man that carried the water pot on his head. The man that had the donkeys. Uh, all through the Bible, the rich man that died doesn't give his name. All through the Bible, there's time after time, the woman that had the issue of blood doesn't give her a name. It, it, all through there, even Lot's wife's name's not named in the Bible. But for some purpose, God gave us this young man's name, Eutychus. His name means fortunate is what his name means. He's fortunate. When you look, <clears throat> when you look at this man, he comes in and he's coming to hear Paul preach. And when he gets there, the first thing that he does is he makes a bad decision. It's a bad decision when you choose to sit in a windowsill three stories up. Everything that will happen this night that will occur will occur after this. The bad decision that he made. Choosing to sit in a windowsill three stories high. It is never a small decision if it's a bad decision. Hear what I'm saying to you. You may think the decision, you, whatever decision you make, you think, well, it's just a small decision. It doesn't matter what the outcome is. That's not true. If it's a small decision, it may be a small decision, but if it's a bad decision, it's never a small decision. It's always a bad decision will escalate. And a bad decision will always get larger and increase. A, a pastor friend of mine told me years ago about a man that was in his church, a man that was in the church. He was a businessman. He was, had become well-to-do. He was a community leader. And he was a deacon in the church. He had been successful in life. He'd gotten married years earlier and they'd had a small child and the small child had got sick. And so they took the child to the doctor and the doctor looked at the child and ran tests on it. And then the doctor called his friend and, and asked the man that was a deacon to come into the doctor's office. They need to meet with him. And so they met with him and he said, I need to run a test on you. And he ran a test on him and 
And he came back the same as the little girl. And he ran. A, he said, I need to run a test on your wife. And he ran a test on his wife. And he brought him back in. And he said, I, I've, got some, I've got some news to give you, buddy. He said, you've got a disease. You've got a venereal disease. And that's what your daughter has got. And he said, no, 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 Doc. He said, that it can't be. It can't be. He said, and your wife's got it. He said, Doc, this can't be. He said, you know, I, I, I've been faithful to my wife. I've, I live good. I'm a deacon in the church. I, I'm successful. I, I'm a pillar of the community. He said, Doc, this would destroy me. And I, I've been faithful. I've not done anything. And that doctor said, now, you need to think. You need to think. Somewhere you broke your relationship. And he, and he thought and he thought and he said, oh, my goodness. 15, 18 years ago after me and my wife first got married, I had a business trip out of the country. And when I was out there, I knew nobody knew me. And nobody would ever know. And he said, so I had a one-night stand. It seemed like a small decision. Ain't nobody going to know. Ain't nobody going to know what happens. Nobody will ever be the wiser. And so I'm just going to do this. And he did that and he came back home. But he picked something up and was carried. He was, became a carrier of that. And it never showed in his life. And he gave it to his wife and his child. When his wife was carrying that, her, when his wife was carrying that baby, that baby picked up that disease from what that father got. In a foreign country. If I remember what the brother told me, he was just telling me how this terrible story. But if I remember the story, right, the, the, the treatment for the child was terrible. And, and she would never be able to have children. His wife, he had to go into a room. The doctor said, man, you've got to go in and you've got to explain to your wife what she's got and you've got to tell her what you did. And so that man had to go in there and tell his wife what he had done. He had been unfaithful 18 years earlier or 15 years earlier. And as that child took that treatment and as he and his wife had to take the treatment, he looked at them and he knew that that small decision that was seemed like so small, just something to do in a moment, uh, now his family was paying for it. Uh, he'll never hear grandchildren uh, run through the door. Uh, he'll never hear the patter of those grandchildren feet run into the house. Why? Because what he thought was a small decision uh, was a bad decision uh, and it wasn't small. And we think that whatever decisions we make, it's just decisions and they're all right, but there's responsibility that comes to those decisions. There is no small bad decision. None. Decisions determine your health. Decisions determine your well-being. The safety of your family. Where you will spend eternity will be the decisions you make. Agrippa thought it was a small decision when he said to Paul, Paul, thou almost persuadeth me to be a Christian. He thought that was a small, it was just part of the conversation. It was just something he said. But that small decision was a bad decision. And today the man is in hell because of the decision that he made that he thought everything would be all right. And so, Eutychus, Eutychus, made a bad decision. He made a decision that he would sit in the window. It will be cooler here. I'll be able to feel the night air. I'll be able to just sit up here and, and, and just feel it and be more comfortable. He was concerned about his comfort instead of the state of his soul. He was more concerned about that. You know, he was more worried about self than he was anything else. He wasn't worried about his soul. He's worried about the comfortability of the flesh. And he, he's, we, we become such a country of self-centeredness. We have become so selfish of a people. I mean, you look at people, everybody, they want something for nothing. They want, they're just selfish. They don't want to work for it. They don't want to do anything for it. But they feel like they deserve everything everybody else gets. And everybody walks around with a chip on their shoulder. I mean, all they're waiting for you to do is knock it off. All they're waiting for you to do is make them mad. All they're waiting for you to do is do something. They've got a chip on their shoulder. I've got my, I remember years ago, and I was thinking about that, Tammy, uh, Faye got on TV and I remember she said well I've got to be me I just got to be me I, whatever happened to being Christ like 
Amen. Whatever happened to preferring your brother above yourself? Whatever happened to keep getting her eyes off of herself instead of on other people? I've never seen so much self-centeredness in all my life. I've quit. I, listen, if you don't get a birthday something me or Facebook, don't think I'm mad. I've just laid off Facebook. I mean, I don't know how to respond to half that stuff, and I don't know what to say. But I want to tell you something. And you, you don't, but I, you, you look at that. I mean, God help me, Holy Ghost. When you sit around and you take pictures of yourself, selfies, and you get in front of a mirror and you take pictures and, and you post them on and then there's 50 people and you sit there and you look beautiful and you're lovely and you're sweet and, and you're gorgeous and, and you sit there and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're starving to death for attention. All that is is self-centeredness. Look at me. See me. Watch me. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, we, we become a nation of just being selfish. We're not worried about anybody or anything. We've got pastors who come to a church. They'll preach. But if somebody else offers them more money, they'll load their Bible, their clothes, and out the door they go. They're not worried about the congregation. They're not worried about the will of God. All the focus is is on me. We have got to the place that we left God out of everything. We walked away from our families. We walked away from the church. And we focused nothing but on ourselves. What we want, that man wanted in the wind. He wasn't worried about other people. He's going to cut the airflow off in that room. Listen, them people will be a lot more comfortable if he doesn't get in that window. There'd be more air coming. He's blocking that. He ain't worried about them. People's not worried today about anybody except themselves. I, I want my happiness. I want my joy. I want my life. I want this. I want that. I told Brother Jeff Osmond, God, I'm going to destroy a good message. I'm going to preach it to you anyhow. But we, he was talking to me. He called me yesterday. And we were just talking. We were sharing. And, and we were talking. I said, you know, people just run from one church to the other. Something happens and used two people just stay in church, but now they leave. And I said, they're supposed to be part of the body. And I said, so when you look back there and a man's left somebody else's church, I said, that was an arm that walked in. That was a leg that walked in. That was a hand. That was part of that body left that church. That part of that body, and I said, an amputee's walked into the church, part of that limb that's been gone. And, and then we got to, <clears throat> we was just talking. He said, yeah, he said, an ear come in. And we just talked. I said, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what comes in every time. I said, it's an eye. I wasn't fed. I wasn't happy. I wasn't getting nothing out of the service. I wasn't. I said, every time you see something, it's an eye that's coming in. Amen. Always self-centered on I. Amen. That's what the Bible. In the last days, men will be lovers of self more than lovers of God. That's where we're at. The focus today is nothing more than on oneself. Now listen. And I ain't, listen. The, 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 the thing is, we cannot get self-centered on ourselves. I'm going to tell you something. We ain't that important. You think everybody's talking about you? Everybody ain't talking about you. You ain't that important. <laughs> no. I mean, you're a legend in your own mind. Everybody ain't, everybody ain't sitting around talking about you, wondering what you're doing. No, 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 no. They got their own lives. But we got so focused on ourselves, we've got to get out of this mentality of self, self-will. He chose not to sit next to the window. He chose to sit in the window. Because of that decision will affect the rest of that night. Be careful of your decisions. This man's life is going to be changed because he sat in the window while Paul preached. The second thing Eunuchus did was he became comfortable with the presence of God. This man is listening to the great apostle Paul. Man, I can read what he says and, and it stirs me. 
I can look at it and, and, and read it and it comes alive and leaves. How this man is standing up there preaching and God's presence is with him and he's sitting in the way. I'm going to tell you what he's doing.